I'm Ed Powers, drill captain from fall 1958 through spring 1960. I'd like to focus during this clip on what I, as drill captain, did on the floor during competitions. I mostly tried to keep myself aligned with the first squad fourth rank. If this man halted it during a movement, I halted and stepped off again when he did. During spread movements, of course, I stayed stationary, eyes forward. I turned my head toward the team to give them commands and then turned it forward during the execution. I wanted the judges and audience to know that I had confidence that, that the movements would be executed properly without my watching them. Of course, it was important to stay out of the way during spread movements. This might mean taking a few extra, extra steps as the team started its spread, as here. In this case, as in the uh, pass-throw manual, I turned toward the team to give them commands, give them the command. I stood at parade rest, stepping to attention on the last count. I gave commands, of course. Beyond that, I needed not to distract from the team's performance. I needed to pay attention to my military bearing. I needed to keep in step, match my arm swing with the rest of the team. I tried always to be not just a guy yelling at the team, but an integral part of the performance. This is the drill captain's chance to shine. Fortunately, unfortunately, we don't see much of it. I think we're to our signature move. The chariot awaits. 
the C-47 that will fly the team from a National Guard base near Purdue to Washington for the Nationals. Here we have a view out of the window on the way to Washington. This is Drill Captain Ed Powers and this is a clip of a couple of our practices for the Cherry Blossom Drill Meet in 1959. I don't remember whether this is Anacostia Naval Air Station or Bowling Air Force Base. That's me with a clipboard. I still have that clipboard with a decal on the back of Purdue Pete at right shoulder arms, decked out in a golden black uniform with a block P on the chest and with his eyes unacceptably straying off to the left. At this point I haven't yet memorized the sequence and I wasn't thinking much yet about my own performance. I and the other officers were watching the team closely making corrections. We were still a little rough at this point in need of polishing. I think this is the first year we wore PDT fatigues. This is the leader spin movement, so-called because the four uh, squad leaders developed it. This is a day or two later. I'd memorized the sequence by now and had stowed the clipboard and was marching myself as I would in competition. There's a little spacing problem here with the fourth squad, but they fudged it in nicely. We went on, went on to win the competition to repeat as national champions. Although it's unfortunate that there is apparently no recording of the team's competition performance, it's good to have a record of some of our practice. Aside from our movements, I think the thing that most impressed judges as well as spectators was our attention to detail. Dress and cover, uniform arm swing, uniform rifle positions, synchronization of movement, and air of confidence. These were, the result, were the result of long hours of practice as shown here. I think there's a life lesson here. The following clips are some of the teams that we competed with at the Nationals. <laughs>